I've got a screwdriver and I'm working around electrical stuff in a thunderstorm. This is going to turn out good. Stick around. You know, when you get a new house, especially you buy use, which most people are going to buy a house that's already been lived in by other people at least once or twice before the, the, they're taking ownership. So you're going to have other people's problems. Anytime you do used, it's other people's problems. With the new house, got a light, don't work. So what's my solution? Simply put, solar. I'll show you why and show you how I did it. Just in case you have a similar problem, maybe you can be benefited. Okay, so I'm trying right now to get some video footage of this before uh, lightning strikes and we have the big storm that's fixing to take place. We've had a drought now for almost a month and now rains have already hit. So, as you see with the house, this used to be a garage and about two owners back three owners back something like that someone decided to turn this garage into a two separate rooms one is my office and then behind that office is the unfinished laundry room and so that light there what they did is they cut the lines up in here and they just cut it off there's no power going to that light socket it's all covered up and everything and so what I'm going to do I've already took that off and verified it I took my electric um, I have a little electric meter that I checked with it I made sure no power was going there what I'm going to do now, I've got to, there's a little thing, I'll take this off and show it to you a little bit, but I need to get a, a cover on here so that I can affix the new solar light. So I'm going to have a solar light here that's going to get light and then shine as a, a spotlight whenever uh, there's some sort of... Uh, intruder or somebody walks by so I'm gonna show you how I do this stick around so they don't really make a cover cover for these things um, I had to find something that would work um, this is a metal piece right here that I bought from Halls and it's galvanized and I'm wanting to paint it black so that it doesn't look junky um, that's one of the things I promised my wife is that I would make this look as good as possible even though I'm having to do a repair over some poor work so to make it paintable I'm going to take the galvanized finish off with distilled vinegar so this is how this works. I've got this in a styrofoam plate and I'm just pouring in some distilled white vinegar over this metal plate. Now why am I doing this? I'm just doing it until it's totally covered. So maybe a cup, maybe, just enough. The reason why I'm doing this, and you can see the reaction taking place right here. Well, it's kind of hard to see it, but there is a reaction taking place now. The, the um, galvanized portion is zinc. So if you ever see galvanized, it just means a zinc coating. And so what I'm doing is using the vinegar, which is an acid, to slowly eat away at the zinc. And I'll leave this for a little bit, and then that will cause 
there to be kind of like a roughness on the metal at the microscopic level and that will provide basically texture for the paint to hold on to otherwise if I paint on this anything comes along could scratch the paint off and even though I've got a quality paint and primer mix spray paint spray paint is notorious for being well less than ideal for sticking on surfaces so this is going to provide optimal adherence for what I'm using it's not even been an hour and you can see all the bubbling so there is a reaction taking place right now it's kind of neat it's hard to tell but I'm in the shed right now um, or what's remaining of a shed we're gonna tear this down but right now it's about to rain and so what I've done is I took some of this uh, Rust-Oleum 2x ultra cover paint and primer and so what i've done is i've just done a base coat of paint it's already the vinegar part took out most of the galvanized metal left it overnight um so i found some bricks here on this old chair that's fallen apart that the former tenants left and so i've just got on a brick and I spray painted this black the other side is bare metal it needs to be sprayed but right now this has to dry and we got a thunderstorm moving in so I'll let this kind of be in a protected environment away from the rain and then once it dries I'll hit it again on the other side with some spray paint so that's it so I wanted to show you what this looks like, dried, the painted part. This is the other side that I haven't painted. So you can see where it ate through that metal and it allows for that paint to adhere. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with this I did with the other side and just get a few inches away, not quite a foot. Just kind of let it touch a little bit in a few times to get even coverage and then stop that's where people mess up you need to have good coverage and then stop don't go overboard I've already looked at this before and it's been capped off so what we're going to do is there's a nut right here. I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew this and take this off. Now we've got this right here. I'm going to have to figure out exactly where to make these holes, drill them in so that they're perfect. So I've got my hands some Q-tips, glue dots, and white paint. So what I'm gonna do is put glue dots on top of the screw heads. Then I'm gonna put a little piece, I'm talking about a tiny, tiny, tiny piece of uh, the uh, Q-tip cotton on top of that and glue it on. And then put just a small dot of white I'll place the the um, base plate over enough just to touch, very minimally touch the uh, the Q-tip cotton, and that will make a perfect uh, marker for where my holes need to be drilled for these screw holes. The glue dots are on there now. Now we're going to put on the cotton. The cotton is now on here as well. Now what I'm going to do is take a, the Q-tip, stick it um, right here where this white paint is in the paint tube, and then apply it a little bit to the top of the, the cotton. 
Now we just put a little bit of paint right here. And a little bit of paint right here. And that will give us a very light impression of where this needs to be. All right, now I'm just gonna take this and lay this on top. Wish me luck. It worked. Now all I gotta do is drill it. All right, time to drill. This is where it gets to be fun. As is the story of my life, of course, the drill bit broke, so I had to get a replacement drill bit for this. But you can see from this, this is actual, just cause I'm on a black countertop, you can see my fingers through it, this hole. I've got holes drilled now. This is the base mounting bracket that goes to the light. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up where I want this mounting bracket to go. And then I've got a Q-tip because, I mean, you know. So I just cut off the Q-tip and so I can get it into these holes a little bit easier. And so what I'm going to do is put some white paint on it and just go in there and touch it because I want to be absolutely precise. I'm not going to try to hold this camera and do that, but you'll see the marks when I'm done. It's hard to see with this light, but now I've got one, two, three perfect holes right there. So now I'll drill those and we'll be good to go. Okay, so what I've done, you can see probably right here, I, where there was some paint that was taken away, I wanted to protect it a little bit, so I had some latex paint. Obviously, it's a different type than the um, spray paint, but I didn't want to wait for spray paint. This is fast drying, and I just wanted to coat it a little bit to make sure I didn't have any rust or anything, so I touched it all up. Um, Anytime you got cheap metal that will most likely rust, it's a good idea to protect it as best you can. So now we'll just put this on and see how it works. All I'm doing here is just unscrewing this nut right or this bolt right here. I've already used a, a voltage meter to, or a meter to check and see if any of these are alive. They're not. They, this power's been cut a long time ago and capped off. That's what I was saying. So I wanted to show you that you never want to leave something live like this. It needs to be cut off. I don't know why they didn't repair it better than what they did, but we're going to go with this and put a new light in. So. I'll show you the next part once I get this rusted piece off. All I'm doing now is to screw these um, in. I've got this just tacked in. I'll get this straightened out in a minute. Okay, so now it's um, on there. It's not the most centered in the world. You can tell that it's not centered. Um, it, it got a little off on me when I was doing the holes. Uh, but, I mean, most of this is not going to be seen anyway, and uh, if somebody don't like it, they can always come to my house and fix it. Well, it's about the storms, so I'm going to just let you know how this is going to happen. I'm going to put screws in here very quickly, and then we're going to mount this on here. And that will allow the um, solar thing to catch any sunlight. We won't be getting any sunlight today because it's raining all the time. But, um, yeah, let's get started before it storms. It's about to storm, but this is the bracket, and it just slides on over here and slides down. So what we'll do, I'm going to try and show you this and operate a camera, but you just kind of slide it in like this. Let me get it on real quick, and I'll, I'll show you the final results. There we go. It's... It's mounted. Like I said, it's not the most straight in the world, but really it don't matter. Um, and I can move these outer 
pieces out, which I'll probably do um, a little bit. And I can move this up or down. So I've got these a little out. So this will catch light as it comes in. And right now it is about to rain. It's already sprinkling. I'm gonna close this out. If you hadn't already given this video a thumbs up, like button, hit um, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Uh, click on that notification bell so you can be alerted to future content and I will see you again next time.